90 million years ago in Patagonia, a giant has fallen. On one of the vast deserts, the sauropod, Futalonchosaurus, has met its end. At 25 meters and over 30 tons, it is enormous, immune from predators, but not old age. And as its herd made its yearly journey across the waste, it had been too much for the old male. He had collapsed and never gotten up, and the rest of the herd had not slowed down and were long gone. Usually, a body this size would be a magnet for dozens of predators, but out here in the desert, the sauropod has mostly remained untouched, baking under the hot sun. One predator has made the journey, following the scent of dead flesh despite the heat. Appearing through the miasma is an eight meter long predator, Megaraptor. Despite the name, he is not related to other species with the name Raptor. He is something else entirely. At first glance, you could be forgiven for mistaking him for some kind of allosaur. His heavily muscled arms each have three huge hook claws, the largest being over 30 centimeters long. These he can use to pierce and hold prey, or simply gut them without ever using his jaws. The male approaches the carcass, taking in the sheer size of the sauropod, laying on its side. He goes to the underside, where the hide is slightly less thick. This is another reason the corpse is mostly untouched. The skin of the sauropod is so thick, few scavengers can puncture it easily. Not so for the Megaraptor. Now right in front of the belly, the carnivore doesn't bite into the flesh to rip out a piece of meat. Instead, he holds out his largest claw and thrusts it into the gut, puncturing straight through. Then using his strong arm muscles, slides the long claw along the body, carving a straight line through the flesh, making blood flood out from the open wound. Once he has made a long enough cut, he pulls back his claw and then uses the same claw on the opposite arm to puncture a bit lower and then cut back along the body till there are two identical slashes along the belly of the sauropod. He then grabs the loose bit of flesh in his jaws and rips out the chunk of meat and drops it to the ground. By making the two incisions with his claws, he has been able to rip out a cut of meat far larger and far more easily than what he could have if he had hacked at the body with his teeth. Now he could feed without plunging his head into the body of the sauropod, using his arms to make any more necessary cuts before shearing off small chunks of meat with his blade-like teeth. Upon finishing his first cut, the male goes to butcher another slab of flesh when he hears something coming from the other side of the sauropod. He rounds the body and looks over the long neck of the herbivore and sees a second megaraptor carving her claws through the carcass's back. The smell of the carcass must have prevented him from noticing her approach. There is enough meat here to feed dozens of megaraptors, but they are solitary animals, and it doesn't matter how big the carcass is, they don't share. The male leapt onto the sauropod's neck and lets out an angry roar. The female jumps back in surprise and eyes the larger male. Despite the fact that he's bigger, she doesn't back down. She has made the long trip here, and she is hungry so returns to cutting out a piece of meat, but this time at a quicker pace. The male walks along the neck of the dead sauropod, ascending higher as he reaches its shoulder. He is almost directly above her. He is about to leap down and attack her when he hears chirping. Looking over to where he was previously, he sees a group of six near Quenraptor. These two meter long narrow snouted dromaeosaurs have also made the long trip and have gone for the open wound that the Megaraptor tore open, and are now frantically trying to eat as much as possible, pushing each other out of the way to try and get a mouthful, with a huge carnivore now leering over them. The male Megaraptor looks at the female, and then back to the Nianquin Raptor, not sure which to engage. In the end, he leaps down to chase off the smaller predators, landing about two meters away from the group, which all turn and run, chirping and screeching in terror. As the male Megaraptor chases off the small scavengers, the female finally rips off a chunk of flesh. She holds it tight against her chest and retreats far enough away from the carcass that the male won't bother her. Over the coming days, the male Megaraptor will actually spend more time defending the carcass 
than eating it. Despite this, many scavengers will slip past him and be able to feed on the massive corpse. But even then, the sauropod's body is so large that most of the meat will go to waste. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the misunderstood carnivore, Megaraptor. First of all, let's address its confusing name. Despite having raptor in the name, Megaraptor is not closely related to what we usually think of as raptors, like Velociraptor, Utahraptor, or Pyroraptor. These belong to the Dromaeosaur family, whereas Megaraptor is a separate family entirely. The reason for the name is because when it was first discovered, they thought the hands were the feet of a large dromaeosaur, and so named it as such. Only to later find more remains and realize they weren't foot claws, but hand claws. The family of Megaraptoridae now contains many species, mostly from South Africa, but also Australia, Thailand, and Japan. Megaraptor itself was discovered in 1996 in northwest Patagonia, Argentina, it lived between 90 and 88 million years ago in the late Cretaceous. It grew up to 8 meters long, stood about 2.5 meters tall, and weighed up to 1 ton. The most distinguishing feature of Megaraptor is its arms, which are quite large for a theropod, but also its three enormous finger claws. The largest was on the thumb, which grew up to 35 centimeters long, but that's just the bone. When the animal was alive, the claw would have been covered in a keratinous sheath, making it longer and sharper, potentially up to 50% larger. These claws could have been used to hold prey in place, so it could bite down on the target with its jaws. Alternatively, it may have used its claws to do most of the attacking, slashing, puncturing, and goring its prey with its arms, and leaving its potentially vulnerable head out of harm's way. Given the massive amount of muscles built around the arms, it's clear they were playing a key role in hunting. Though we don't have a skull of an adult, a partial skull of a juvenile was found, showing it to be long and slender, with rather small serrated teeth. Leg bones of other members of its family indicate that Megaraptors were relatively lightly built and could reach high speeds when running. Overall, the family of Megaraptor isn't very well known, with only a few fragmentary fossils for each species, and nowhere near a full skeleton for any of them. Some other members of the family include Phyrangoveneta from Thailand, Fukiraptor from Japan, Australoveneta from Australia, and Orcoraptor, also from Argentina. But where does Megaraptor fit in the dinosaur family tree? Good question, because it's been labelled a Spinosaur, a Carcharodontosaur, an Allosaur, a Neovenator, and a Tyrannosaur. Currently, the family sits in its own family, but close to basal Tyrannosaurids, or as an offshoot of Neovenatoridae. So unfortunately, we don't know a great deal about Megaraptor, or the rest of its family, thanks to limited remains. But they are one of the most frightening-looking carnivore groups to have ever lived, Combining size with seemingly disproportionately large arms and claws, they definitely spread far over the southern continents, and were very diverse in South America, proving that large theropods aren't always all about the huge heads and crushing bite forces. They are a relatively unknown and understudied family, and hopefully will get more finds, like the recent Maip, a megaraptor that got up to 13 meters long. And with more like this, will come more interest in the group as a whole. But what do you think of Megaraptor? Do you think they should have maybe skipped an arm day on occasion? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to cover in a future episode? And until then, thank you for watching.